Welcome to the session Linking Build Environment Education and Participation. Every day we move about in a designed and built environment. It has a key influence on our well-being and social life. And these spaces are produced and defined by us and they are constantly changing. But the way we make our cities and buildings a good place to live should not be a question uh, reserved for adults. Uh, children and young people are also enthusiastic and intensive users and navigators of city spaces and their awareness and experiences with places and spaces makes them experts not only for their own interests. There is in general a rising interest to create better public participation today not only and especially fueled by as unsuccessful participation processes, and often also the participation of children and young people, if it happens, fails to create influential participation. Influential participation occurs, and here I'm citing some scholars, when actions aim to intervene in existing conditions when involvement is part of the public dialogue and decision-making, and changes are significant. And speaking from a planning, design and construction perspective, I and other colleagues stress that participation by children and young people has become neither a cross-cutting issue in today's city regional planning and urban design and architecture practice, nor part of planning culture. In fact, planners and architects and also decision makers are still often quite unsure how to involve young people. And this is especially true for children and young people under the age of 18. There are several reasons for that. And one reason is for sure the demanding and complex nature of planning, designing and urban development. It is also the failure to reach young people and to keep them interested. And a big issue is the failure to incorporate in the end their ideas in real implementation. Build environment education offers various way, ways to enable young people to participate in urban design planning processes to make participatory planning and design more fun. And this session focuses exactly on that, on teaching young people uh, and children about the built environment and to discuss the benefits for participatory planning and design with and for children and young people. So the first part of this session is about defining children's and youth participation and its value for urban planning and design. As mentioned already, there has been a rising awareness which acknowledges children and young people as stakeholders to be involved in urban development and design processes. Children and young people are progressively seen as potential experts in their own lives, and here I'm quoting, and in Germany, young people are also recognized as producers of cities. In current participation processes, children and youth take over different tasks. Firstly, they identify problems. Secondly, they analyze causes and resources in order to solve these problems. Thirdly, they mobilize other stakeholders. Fourthly, they formulate goals and design action plans, actually. And last but not least, they implement actions and evaluate their outcomes. Planning practitioners and politicians and researchers identify a long list of convincing benefits of children and youth participation, especially in the areas of civil law, democratic and political theory, educational, ethical, ethical and moral theory, and service orientation. And specifically, these include things like Intergenerational exchange through participatory processes can be improved and it can be improved through communication and understanding between younger and older people in society. And being involved 
in planning and decision making gives young people an opportunity to bring forward their own ideas and present themselves as equal discussants. This helps to decrease also negative prejudices, which adolescents especially frequently face in society. By actively involving different groups, environments can be created which suit the needs of diverse groups in society. And involving young people and their interests becomes even more important. Participatory processes foster also integration in a neighborhood and the identification with a community being involved in shaping the environment by being taken seriously in the process and appreciated. Participatory processes foster social and democratic learning to conclude here. Here you can see a table and the table contains a number of scales and themes of participation by children and young people in the context of German city planning and design. And it is derived from a research project called a practical, practical test of youth participation. It was an evaluation of 55 pilot projects in youth participation in Germany. And the pilot projects and their evaluation were actually funded by the German Federal Ministry of Transport Building and Urban Affairs. And it was to provide an explorative setting for testing different methods and instruments and also strategies to involve youth in urban planning and decision-making processes by funding real-life youth participation. Although planning levels are clearly indicated in the table, I have to stress there is no clear cut in responsibilities, in instruments, and even the themes in each layer. And in practice, there are numerous crossover planning processes. The value of the table is that it identifies themes and topics that have a strong relation to the needs and interests of young people. As also named and addressed in the pilot's projects that we studied, that mainly contained uh, young people aged 12 and older. It shows where explicit thematic focuses and topics are to involve children and young people in the processes of regional, city, and neighborhood planning, or public space design, or in projects on micro level of a building or a site. It can be said that is in practice not that in practice not all planners and architects are aware of these themes and topics that young people are actually interested in. And again, coming back to our table, looking at the themes and the topics and the level of planning, it has to be decided in every place and space and time how the agency or participatory engagement of children, young people should be done here. It is necessary on the different planning and design scales to discuss this. And this is exactly has to be part of the participatory process to be carried out. It also differs in who actually starts or leads the participatory planning processes. Often it is state-led, sometimes it is youth advocate-led, and sometimes even the young people themselves push from roots this participation. Our study showed that the bigger the spatial setting of planning, the more likely there were to be assigned and consulted participation strategy. So we talk about state-led participation. In addition, in city and regional and neighborhood planning, state-led participatory processes were really mostly implemented. Here, colleagues in practice doing participatory processes had at times trouble gaining and keeping the interest of children and young people in these very processes. And as city and regional planning often deals with long-term development of a whole region, city or city district, challenges were described such of the really high degree of abstraction and generalization of planning issues the long planning horizon, sometimes of 10 or 20 years, and again, the huge gap between planning and implementation and the lack of personal contact between decision makers and the participating adolescents. 
What is more interesting and real to children and young people is being part of the design process of public spaces and buildings they, in which they are actually the main users, such as, for example, schools, youth centers, or playgrounds. This includes also the design as seen of all, all outdoor spaces, meeting places, and street furniture, as well as performances, events, and installations that target the redesign of public squares and green spaces. At this scale of planning and designing, it is where more use and also child-initiated and directed uh, shared decision-making with adults is happening. In the cases of the studied projects, here the numbers of youth-led pilot projects is actually quite high, but also demanding in the level of professionalism, self-organization, and project coordination for the young people. And a main obstacle is the availability and the access to suitable spaces. On the one hand, availability, in this context refers to whether neighbors and property only simply accept the reuse by young people. And apart from that, it's also the lack of knowledge of planning procedures, building codes and regulations, which is a, a named by the young people as an obstacle. And then on the other hand, all, it also availability refers to the lack of appropriate properties and places within the city or the quality of the design as aesthetics of such self-made pro projects sometimes conflict with the historic well-kept cityscape, for example, or the design of a public space. Also, uh, the challenge is that uh, it, some of these use-led pro proposals conflict, of course, with the needs of other user groups. A few examples show that also Professionals directing these participatory planning projects face challenges. They are demanding not only for us, but also for the young people as showed. And this is where children's and young people's education on architecture and urban design and planning can actually help them. And here keep in mind the aims of build environment education, which very much provides the topic and content and the tools young people need. A review of international research on the acquisition of competences and learning through commitment and participation can be also defined and, and, and found. And this uh, aspect I will not further discuss, but it is important to consider that the discussion in the discussion of linking participation and build environment education. You already know we have multiple methods that uh, enable children and young people to learn about the city and their neighborhoods and processes of space production and to express their ideas about them. And going back to the session of methods and exercises in BE, you can and should use them in participatory processes. They have a strong capacity to improve children's and young people's experience in participation. The participation itself can be guided by the four sets of methods that represent the planning and the design processes of space. Firstly, space investigation, exploring and analyzing spaces and places. Secondly, fantasizing and testing out ideas. Thirdly, designing, the, entering the designing phase and developing designs and drawing collages and models as well as, in the end, very important step, communicating the results in the wider public. The aim of the methods is to foster the competencies and skills and also communicative, interactive processes of participation. To start with the first step, space investigation of exploring and analyzing places and spaces. Please, and this is really important, never start a participation process with a wish list of ideas. It is important also not to jump into planning and designing without knowing the space, finding out people's needs or reflect uh, upon your own needs. 
it is also crucial not only to find out about children and young people's perception of good and bad spaces, but also to look for hidden qualities to uh, build and plan upon. In DEE, there are a number of exercises to encourage children and young people to explore the built environment with all their senses, remember, to understand also the connections and to form their own opinion, for example, by transversing buildings and districts, by mapping out sensory impressions or by making out movements, positive or negative aspects within the space by holding interviews or by taking photos and videos. And depending on the planning and design focus, they can carry out or can be carried out, also carry out a conventional site analysis, including working with maps, area photos or existing master plans. By searching for scenes, for example, from films or paintings in their neighborhoods, participants are challenged at times to change their own views on their everyday surrounding and to identify, again, hidden potential. But young people can also learn through discussions with planners and architects about the background of planning, such as ownership, building codes, and land use regulations. Build environment education is also connected with actively entering the city and the neighborhoods, exploring it on foot by public transport or by bicycle. It includes side visits sometimes also to learn about other spaces in their surrounding that they may not use uh, every day. And engaging intensively with the city and in its inhabitants or with the villagers, one aim of build environment education is actively might be simply to read, assess and understand spaces and its shaping forces, which fosters again an understanding of the complexity of, of planning and development, and which has, has to bring together these different needs and demands in space. It also can bring up criticism and children may come up with suggestions for change, which usually leads to the next steps of developing ideas and design. Fantasizing and testing and developing ideas and designs. Remember, a number of methods are out there to foster this. In the investigation and experience of spaces and people, um, they are basically the base on which young people should develop their own spatial vision. Here, exercises to experiment with colors, forms, materials, foster the quality of final projects. And the aim within step three is to encourage young people to gain means of creative expressions and to develop various meaningful ideas for spaces, buildings, or their, even their whole village or urban district. It is to prevent them, remember, to jump on first ideas, which come up very fast and furthermore, it is to reflect planning and design ideas also in the light of other uses, which often involves role play, for example, or design exercises explicitly targeting on other user groups. And the design process often works with the visualization of ideas and techniques that are taught in college, college collage making or drawing or storytelling. And sometimes films are also produced to convey main ideas. And here the aim is usually to foster peer learning as the young people often have very high competencies when it comes to some of these media. One very successful method in participatory planning and design has proved to be testing children's and young people's idea as to temporary one-to-one -one installations in buildings on streets and plazas. Remember, this was also methods I introduced before. And here, for example, a school hallway can be transformed into a parkour and pupil pupils can monitor the reactions of their fellow students. Or a street can be temporarily closed to study its potential as an extended schoolyard. And sometimes these temporary prototypes or events were the start of a decision and planning discussion with politicians, residents, and other stakeholders. And this brings me to the last step, the presenting and discussion of ideas. Presentation skills prove to be very crucial for the impression children and young people make on the officials and uh, 
decision makers, so in public hearings or in committee meetings, to win the advocators and supporters uh, for young ideas and projects. In planning processes, especially young people and occasional children get involved in heated discussion with city officials and politicians and residents. So role play or even escalation training can help to prevent motivation from dwelling after hard discussion and negative, maybe even press articles or protests also by residents. All children and young people do not just want to announce their views. Uh, from our experience working with YAS, we try to combine participatory processes with visual results, there, which can be by all means temporary in nature. So depending on the planning target, street designs, billboards, postcard series, performances, design briefs could be, for example, created uh, and presented by children and young people. to bring all parts of this lecture together in part three, the links between build environment education and young people's participation. As presented, there are a number of ways to enhance participatory planning processes as a means of learning about planning and design and to foster the quality of the outcome and the communication of young ideas. Coming back to Roger Hart's letter of participation, of children's participation, it defines different means and degrees of participation. And Hart himself makes clear that there can be manifold interpretation of the letter, such of the assumption that the higher the rocks of the letter uh, are necessary superior to the ones beneath. And he makes it's clear that this is a misunderstanding as only the degree of participation needs to suit the respective project as already pointed out before. Important for the linking of BE and children and youth participation is that each degree of participation has different level uh, of children's agency and therefore comes with different demands and challenges for the participants. The more children and young people take the lead in participation processes, the more demanding it is likely to be for them. And furthermore, in much the same way that planning tasks and aid, uh, agendas differ, different competencies, skills and knowledge help to master participatory planning processes. And when children and young people participate in the planning and design processes, Urban analysis and design skills, knowledge about planning processes itself, as well as the presentation and communication skills are indeed helpful. Build environment education can therefore help children and young people to better master different rocks of the participation. Many scholars and practitioners agree that build and environment education can be regarded as a necessary component of successful participation processes. BE practitioners even state that bad participation practices influences build and environment educational processes, again, negatively. So there is a linkage in two ways between them. There also, though there is also a, a academic discussion on whether pedagogical participation should, what it should be like. And it can be clearly stated that there is a distinction between participation and education as their primary goals differ. More clearly, some scholars explain that, and here I'm quoting, young people's work that focuses on individual learning and development rather than on changing their surroundings is not real participation. And other scholars also come to the conclusion that by definition, children and youth participation is not pedagogical because it allows young people to be political actors and policy makers. Nevertheless, there is a general agreement that participation automatically implies educational processes. 
Studies show that participation itself leads to key qualifications such as self-reliance, communication skills and developing one's own view, viewpoints can be strengthened in participation. Hence, even if participation is not intended to be educational, educational processes take place. This makes planners and anybody else organizing a participatory planning and design process into an educator. Beyond disciplinary boundaries, uh, build environment education practice shows that children and young people have great ideas and develop critical thinking. BE promotes self-confidence and communication skills, allows clear presentation not only of planning and design ideas, but also of political, social and economic facts. Build environment education ultimately is enabling participation in decision-making processes. Therefore, linking build environment education with participation is a way to hold the ladder for better children and youth participation. And if you're wondering where I'm standing, I'm standing in an exhibition titled Next Generation City Planning, focusing on young people's and children's spatial knowledge and what it actually provides for future planning of cities, towns and villages.